What is going on YouTube? Real Touch GML here back with our seventh Java game development tutorial in this series. Today, what we're going to be looking at is first off, from a viewer's request, we are going to be fixing the little bug, which is sticky keys. Uh, so basically, I don't know if you noticed this in your project, if you're following along or not, but you know, say, uh, you know, you, you tap the keys like, like uh, really quickly and you know the player gets stuck it's not like it's not like a fluid motion you know so if you just kind of you know it just kind of gets stuck there you know I'm pressing the left key and it's and it's not going left so all of that stuff so we're gonna fix that today also we may look at creating another AI or another enemy that is a little bit smarter than these guys here they don't just bounce off the walls in different ways what this guy's gonna do is basically it's gonna allow you to uh, it's gonna allow the player to it's gonna make the player have to move around because you know you can kind of sit in this corner right now and, and you know you're not covering as much space because you're not moving and technically uh, that gives you greater chances of survival in the game because you're covering less space but we can fix this by creating an enemy that follows that follows you right so if you're over here the the enemy is now going to put its path towards you. It's not going to be bouncing off or anything like that. All right, which is going to be pretty cool. We're going to use a couple algorithms for that to uh, get the distance and all that stuff and then set the, our velocity X and our velocity Y accordingly. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the key input here and let's go ahead and look at the system we have already created, right? So basically what we're doing is we're saying, okay, if we hit the W key, we're setting our velocity Y to negative five, right? Now, if we hit our S key, we're setting it to 5, right? Now, this can become a problem uh, when you're bashing them back and forth like that um, because it, you know, it's, it doesn't know whether it's going to be negative 5 or 5, so it just kind of uh, goes at, at 0, it, you know, because that's the middle between negative 5 and 5, right? So what we're going to do is instead of using a system where when we release we're just gonna take away the velocity y what we're gonna do is we're gonna create four boolean arrays or an array of bo uh, boolean values so private boolean and then we're gonna put the two brackets there to basically say hey this is an, ar an array and we're gonna name it like key down equals new boolean or boolean however you say it and we're going to make four counts of this array, right? So right here we have four. So we can create a for loop to just basically, we're gonna start all of them off at false, right? But just because they're four, it's easy. And I'm just gonna put key down zero equals false. Key down one equals false. Key down two equals false. And key down three equals false. All right, now, so basically we're gonna say key down is gonna be our W key, or whichever, you know, if you have the arrow key up. Key, uh, key one, key down one is going to be our S key. Key down two is gonna be the D, and key down three is gonna be the A, all right? So what we can do here is in our key event, so if key equals key event VKW, we're going to set our temp, our, uh, temp object dot set velocity Y to negative five. We're also going to switch our key down boolean variable to true. All right, and basically, uh, these these boolean values just hold. Okay, is the key pressed or is it not pressed? Right. So here we're going to say key down one equals true. All right, key down two equals true, and key down three equals true. Okay, now that all should work out. So basically when you hit the W key, it's now setting that our key down zero to true. And so, but it's not going false, right? So that's when we go down to our key released here. Instead of our temp object uh, dot set velocity y to zero, we're gonna totally comment this out. And the only thing we're changing when we release our W key is now we're sending key down zero to equal false. Okay, same with this, key down one equals false, Q 
key down two equals false and key down three equals false all right now all we have to do is basically just say if now this is going to be for our uh, vertical movement I'll comment that in there so we're just going to say if not key down zero and not key down one then we're going to set temp object dot set velocity y to zero and we can copy this and we can paste it down this is going to be our hor horizontal movement and instead of zero we're going to say two and three and set our velocity x to zero and if we go ahead and run the game now as you can see and you can try this out yourself we're no longer I'm switching the keys very quickly and we're not getting that uh, zeroed out uh, effect and you know we can now hit the keys however we like and it's going to respond exactly how we want it so the controls are now set up so that we can uh, do exactly you know what the player wants to move is where he's gonna move so there you go that's how you fix the little uh, keyboard input glitch uh, you know obviously there's better ways of doing it but this is I think even for tutorial sake this is the most this is the easiest to understand and uh, it works just fantastically so um, so there you go that is how you fix that and it's actually pretty easy it's not it's not too difficult we're just basically putting these keys into an, an array value so there you go all right let's go ahead and create another AI this is the fun part I, I love doing enemy AI and all of that stuff so let's go ahead and, and begin so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take basic enemy copy it just like we did our fast enemy create a new class we're gonna call this smart enemy because why not copy uh, copy and paste in all of our basics change it to smart and in our ID enum there we're just gonna create a new ID smart enemy all right, and let's make let's make the color for this enemy. Uh, yeah, what do we want to make it? Let's make it uh, green. All right, there we go, just like that. So, all right, what are we gonna do this time, right? So we're gonna start off. We've got an algorithm set up. So, what we want to do is we want to basically just calculate the distance between the player. And the enemy and and, and uh, our smart enemy here right so once we've calculated the distance we can then uh, take that distance and set the velocity X and the velocity Y uh, we, we can divide that and um, uh, multiply its difference so the difference between our position and the players position I have that. Well, let's get into it. It should make more sense, right? So let's create a new game object real quick, and we'll call this player. All right, and just uh, quickly in here, just to kind of uh, get what our player is. I don't know what I'm doing here. We create a for loop int i equals zero. I is less than handler dot object dot size i plus plus if handler dot object dot get i equals um, or uh, get ID if that equals ID dot player then player equals handler dot object dot get I very basic right there basically we're just running through the for loop code of our array checking okay now if um, our certain variable gets the ID of player then we're just kind of setting this object uh, game object to player all right so now we can use that variable so what we're gonna do here is let's get rid of this velocity X and velocity Y and let's start off by saying actually you know what? we need to do this in the tick method actually so let's go down in the tick method and here what we can do is we can create a float called our diff x which is the difference on our x axis 
This is going to equal our x position minus player dot get x. Um, and then we can subtract eight just to get the middle of uh, the very middle won't get like the top corner. So we do the same thing with our difference for y equals y minus player dot get y minus eight. And you can play around with this this minus eight, uh, you know, if you have bigger sprites or something like that. All right, and then we're going to say float distance, right? And this is where we're going to get our difference. So this is going to equal math. And we're going to get the square root. And in here, and this is going to get kind of confusing, but we're going to basically get the distance. It's a distance algorithm, right? So we're going to say x minus player dot get x. All right. And I'm already getting confused here. Multiplied, and make sure you got the parentheses right, x minus player dot get x. Okay. Plus, so hold on a second. Let's see, where are the parentheses? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing good here. We're doing good here. And we're going to say y minus player dot get y. Um, and that is going to be multiplied by y minus player dot get y again and then I believe we need to cast that from a float because that this math dot square root takes a double value all right and I think let me just look over this I think this should be good and you know if if this that doesn't work for you make sure you've got all the parentheses right and uh, all of that right so I think we've got it all right so let's go ahead then and say Velocity x equals, we'll cast this to a float, um, or no, we'll cast that to an int, and then I'll float. This is going to equal negative 1 divided by our distance multiplied by our difference x. And I was right, that actually is an int. Copy this, paste it down, set our velocity y, multiply by our difference y. All right, and this right here should be the only, this should be the code right here to set that up, right? So let's go ahead and go into our spawner class. And let's copy this, paste it down, five, change this to smart enemy, id.smart enemy and then in our quick player class here just for our collision we can also make sure that we get collision being checked by ID that smart enemy and let's go ahead and run the game so we may get an error we may not it may not even work but we'll have to go back into it so right so here we have the game we're running it we've got a cool little survival thing going on here you know we're, we're going we're going we're going to get our next enemy here, which is our fast enemy. And then we should. Okay. It's kind of working. But not really. <laughs> Let's see. It's, it's kind of going in the direction that we want it to. But there's something wrong here. And let me go ahead and take a look. Okay. So I located the issue. And prepare to have a major pain in the ass if you've been following along all this time. Because basically, the way I put, I made my system last time, and I went ahead and looked back at the code. Uh, basically, I made everything instead of integers. I made them into floats, and this is how that system. That's the only way this system is going to be able to work. So uh, basically, everything that was once an int turned into a float. So I'll go ahead and try and run you through this real quick. I know this is going to be kind of confusing. Uh, first off, start with your game object. Float x and y. Float velocity x. Make sure you put these parameters as floats. Uh, make sure you change the getters and setters. If you use an eclipse, it'll show you all the errors that pop up once that actually happens. All right. Um, you're going to need to go into you know your player and all of the 
rectangles here, cast them to integers because they can only take integers. And every time you have to draw a rectangle or something, you're going to have to cast it to an integer. Uh, like I said, the major pain in the ass. My fault. I should have looked ahead on that a little bit, but I didn't. So, again, fill in rec with an integer. It's going to show you almost all the files are going to have errors because, uh, you know, because we're, we were using an integer system and now we're changing it to a float system, right? So if we go ahead and go to our game class here, as you can see, our now our clamp method needs to be float. It needs to change all these parameters to floats. So it returns a float. Um, yeah, basic enemy. All, all the stuff that we're drawing, we need to change them to integers and all of that. So yeah, if you have any questions, go in the comment section. I'll, I'll, I'll be... Uh, I'll be down in the comment section if you have any questions and uh, you can go ahead and ask, you know, why something's not working or, you know, if you ch yeah, have to change a parameter to float or something like that. Make sure you go through every single file though and you change all of this or else you're going to be getting some weird stuff, right? So let's go ahead and run the game now. So I tried it out again and with everything changed this float. So again, this whole game is now using a float system instead of an integer. So as, as we go, we're going, we're going, we're going. And uh, so we got our fast enemy here. And then we get our green enemy, right? So now our green enemy is following us, which is pretty cool. So now we can't just kind of stay tuned back. We have to, uh, you know, or else that enemy is going to catch up to us and kill us. So there we go. That's the next enemy in this in this game. So leave a like, go subscribe. Let's go for 100 likes this time. One quick thing I also wanted to tell you is in the heads-up display system, that's going to be, I think, the most confusing. Uh, create a float variable for your green value. Create a float variable for your health. And, um, you know, obviously this game.clamp is going to give you an error. You're going to have to go ahead and, again, in the game class, change everything to float. In our set color, make sure you cast that to an integer, our green value, and cast our health to an integer. Okay, so go leave a like, go and subscribe. Hope this tutorial helped out, even though it is probably a big pain in the ass. Oh well, I will see you guys next time. Peace and love.